back to Lavender Polish. Today we will be taking a look at the Botanical Venom Collection by Live Love Polish. I know it came out a while ago, I'm a little bit late with this, so we're not going to waste any time and just jump straight into it. I want to start out here with a bit of an interesting choice, uh, Moonflower. This is an entire collection of all linear hollows, and this is their silver one. Now you may be thinking, Lavender Polish, why would you start out with a silver? It's boring, that's not going to capture our attention, but listen, I think that this color perfectly encapsulates the entire essence of this collection and of Live Love Polish's brand. Because even though this is such a generic silver polish, it stands out in its own way above all other <laughs> silvers that I have tried, just in how jam-packed it is with holographic particles that my camera honestly couldn't even pick it up properly. I'll show you in a second, but the clips I have it outside, my nails almost look blurry even though everything else is in focus because my camera just couldn't handle how holographic this nail polish is. And that's why I want to start out with Moonflower and just show you that this collection takes even the most basic of colors and just brings them up a whole extra level. Here are the outside shots. Look at that flame. God, look at that thing. They are so holographic that even in indirect and indoor lighting, they still have a holographic shine to them and look absolutely gorgeous. Next up, I want to show you Oleander. This was by far my favorite color of this entire collection. Partially because it almost changes colors depending on what light you're in, which I just found so mind-blowing. I just couldn't stop staring at it. But anyway, it's Oleander. It goes on in a clean two coats, and it's kind of like a deep burgundy maroon red color with a bit of an extra blue tinge to it in the hollow flame. And as you can see outside, again, it is frying my camera with how holographic it is but it has much more of a purple hue to it outside. But inside, it becomes almost a reddish brown color, and in indirect lighting, it returns to a bit more of a bluey purple state again, which I just thought was really, really cool. I love this color in every single type of lighting. I thought it was mesmerizing. I couldn't get over it, um, and I really did not want to take it off. Next, we're gonna go back to the soft colors with Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea is a cute little champagne color. It went on in three coats, which is not too bad for such a light color. And just like all the others, the hall of flame in it is glorious. <laughs> this one is a bit of a balance in between Oleander and Moonflower because like Moonflower, the hall of flame is ginormous and glorious and beautiful and sexy. And the color, like Oleander's, changes depending on what lighting you're in, going from this very soft champagne in outdoor lighting to this gorgeous bold gold color when I was inside. Next we have Wisteria. This is one of my favorite colors, but it is my favorite name out of the whole collection. I mean, Wisteria, oh my god. Are you kidding me? This is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. I'm gonna name my firstborn Wisteria, I swear to god. This is a beautiful deep purple polish. It went on in two coats. Unfortunately, none of the U polishes in this collection were one coat or hollows, which was a bit of a bummer, but also not the worst thing in the world. Two coats is still wonderful. And as you can see outside, it does not hold back. The color gets a lot lighter and a lot brighter. The hollow flame is present. I keep saying that, but it just the, the amount of pigment in this collection, guys, it's insane. <laughs> and as the others do, it also looks incredible in indirect and indoor lighting. It's much more gray and muted, but still looks stunning, if you ask me. Here we've got Juniper. Now, this color it is riding that perfect line somewhere in between a green and a blue. I think that on camera, it definitely looks a little more green, but once I put a green next to it, it instantly turns into a blue polish. It's magic. I was trying to find some colors in my collection that looked like it, and I could not find one no matter how hard I tried. This one went on two coats the way that most of the ones in this collection do. And here in the outdoor lighting, you can really see how uh, impossible it is to decide if it's green or blue. As soon as I start thinking it's green, it turns blue. As soon as I start thinking it's blue, it turns green. It was a very stressful polish to wear. I couldn't like pair it with anything very well because I was stressed out, but I loved it. It was a good kind of stressed out. And last but not least, we have Larkspur. This is a deep, almost navy blue polish, and one thing that really impressed me about it is that I found that for some reason, a lot of the dark blue hollows that I've used just don't have that strong of a hollow flame. I don't know if it has something to do with the pigment and the color, or if I've just gotten unlucky with dark blues, but they've all had super, super muted hollow flames. So I was kind of expecting the same from this one. But if you take a look in just a moment, I was sorely mistaken. <laughs> it definitely still isn't as strong as the other hollows in this collection. However, it is much better than a lot of the other ones that I have seen 
in my lifetime. I just thought that all of these polishes were so beautiful. This is a collection that I would highly recommend. It doesn't have a lot of the basics, so I wouldn't necessarily call it a starter collection, but I think it is a good way to sort of level up your collection and bring a whole bunch of new, much more interesting colors into it. So this collection as a whole costs $75, which comes out to about $12 per polish. This does give you a bit of a discount because if you buy the polishes independently, they come out to about $14 each. Um, obviously, whether it's $75 or $14, that is still quite pricey. But if you don't want to get the whole thing and just want a couple, I definitely recommend Oleander, Wisteria, and if you don't have a silver, Moonflower for sure. Absolutely. I was shocked by how good it looked. Holy fuck. Also, quick reminder, I will be doing a second little montage at the end, so stay tuned for that if you would like to see. Okay, so final thoughts about this collection. Overall, definitely a net positive for me. I do think it is a little bit on the pricey side. The polishes, as I said, run $14 each, and even though you get a discount for buying the whole thing, it's still pretty up there. <laughs> One of the reasons I ended up getting was just because Little Posh had sent me a $10 discount and because it was a sale weekend, so it was discounted on top of that. So I think I got it for about $60, which was definitely much more worth it for me. But that being said, I don't think that $75 is ridiculously expensive, considering the fact that you're getting six different very high quality polishes. And I think that that is about all I have to say about the collection right now. Uh, please let me know in the comment section what you guys think of this collection. Did you buy it? Do you like Live Love Polish? Are you blown away by the amount of collections they've been pumping out recently? I got this like a month ago and they've already released two more collections since then. Two more. Ignore my naked nails, I'm so sorry. It's been a long week. But anyways, I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Have a good week.